manifestation is one of the things that happens when you have an energy center, one of the energy centers connected up to the throat. However, that energy decides to make its way, is imprinted to make its way to the throat center. This is where we communicate and this is where we have action. All of that arises from our experience of, ex of interfacing with the outside world. All of these gates are about the world of form, being able to express or being able to act. So when a manifester has energy innately in the design, it's about, I think, 8.9% uh, of the population, not even 9% of the population or something, or am I getting it backwards, 9.8? Right now it's 9.8, so not quite 10% of the population. They're here to have a very specific calling, if you will, or purpose to initiate something into the world. To, in PG5 terms, we call it innovation, innovate, to be an innovator. So in order for them to operate in alignment, they need to be able to inform people of what they need to innovate or, or initiate. So back to your question, Andrew, about being a supporter, much of the channels in this design are about supporting. So I'm gonna show you something on um, one of the places, oh, it's not working, there we go, uh, that I use to illustrate on the fly. I want you to look at your design right now, everybody, it doesn't have to be just manifestors, but if you look at your design and you compare it with what I've got on the screen, what you're seeing is a ability either with a whole channel an ability to support others or a need to support a supporter okay so being supportive of your tribe your people being having a need to be needed having a, an ability to um, manifest or guide to success or generate all of these different energies here in these channels are going to help someone support another particularly if you have the whole channel this is your life force this is part of your design it's your strength your capacity for supporting the other is seen in the design so i want to ask you if you're still there andrew to let us know if any of these gates are activated in your design so feel free to type it into the chat if you'd like to share too do you have any gates that are activated that are telling you about your need for support. I'm gonna leave that there for a moment so you can take a look at your design. But that is about supporting. And as you can see in my design, that's a big part of what I'm here to learn wisdom about. And I have to put, go up here. So in order to support my tribe, I have the wisdom of implementing. I have the ability to smell potential success. I have the ability to smell what can be transformed, to literally be able to help people through their fear of failure and maybe even their fear of success. What does it mean if I actually succeed? Who am I to succeed? You know, that kind of thing. Because that's where my tribal circuitry is. I'm about supporting and nourishing and caring for my tribe through the wisdom of the splenic center, which is our body intelligence. So what's gonna be most supportive? I'm learning about that over my lifetime. This is where I have wisdom for other people. So hopefully that helps answer your question about why is it that in these um, typing systems, I am a supporter and here with the manifestor, everything I read is not about being supportive. Now that's uh, maybe some homogenized information that you've been finding because a manifester, whoops, yeah, did I write that down, manifester? Manifester, this manifester right here is incredibly supportive of their tribe in alignment. This manifester is there to support the, the, the tribe having what they need, distributing resources. So um, let me see if that, if that helped a little bit. You're not sure where you're looking, you see uh, many gates. Okay, so Andrew, why don't you stay at the end and I'll um, help you look through some of the resources, the free resources. I'll show you exactly where to look. There's some free software that will tell you exactly how many gates you have in tribal circuitry, okay? So 
again, a manifester is about peace. Their signature is operating in alignment without interference. If they are operating out of alignment, here's your signpost manifester. If you're feeling chronically angry rather than peaceful, you're out of alignment. Simple. So what do you do instead? You operate according to your strategy of informing. And I have that on another slide that I'll review when we get to the end here. Now let's move on into our generator types. This is the majority of the population and their signature is satisfaction with who they are for themselves, what they do with their energy, how they utilize their energy, whether they're building a family or building a business, whatever the case may be, our generators have the capacity to be able to build the world we live in. That's what those channels that are connected to the sacral center are about. So when that generator is operating out of alignment, they're doing stuff for the money, they're sacrificing their well-being and their health uh, for something that is not their passion, they're chronically walking around frustrated. If they think they have to be like a manifester, and most types are being conditioned to think that they have to go out and make it happen. It's all you. If it's to be, it's up to me, says the not self mind of anybody that is not a manifester. If they're trying to do that, they'll end up trying to push the flow of their energy out instead of waiting for life to come to them so that their sacral can respond with a sound or movement that is in agreement or not with whether or not this opportunity is correct for them to utilize their energy. So if they're chronically, if you as a generator are chronically frustrated, please consider waiting instead of initiating because you're not a manifester. No matter what of these channels, even if you see on your body graph, it says manifesting generator, that does not mean you have the manifester strategy. You still have uh, a strategy of waiting for life to ask of you and the energy arising from within you to respond to what life wants of you. Is it in alignment with your highest and best self? Your sacral always knows moment to moment. That's what the beautiful thing is about most of this planet is that you have your internal navigation system as a felt sense inside of your body. I can't even imagine what that's like to have a moment by moment GPS that's telling me, uh-huh, uh-uh, uh-huh, uh-uh. Like that's so beautiful. What a beautiful strategy to have. So for those of us who are not generator, everybody else, including especially our advisors, our, our projectors, here's your key. How to operate with the generator in correctness? Ask them yes, no questions so that they're not frustrated, so that they can find satisfaction because that's what the sacral needs. It wants guidance from life. And this cannot come from somebody telling them what to do because they believe that that person needs to do what they think they should do. It has to come from the generator approaching the other first, for those of us who are projector and evaluators, our awareness types. These guys need to approach us and ask, and then we need to, however our process is, ask them back. And that's one of the key points as far as going back into the practical application that Sandy was asking. So here, how do we put the information we know to practical use? Practical use for, a gener for us, anybody operating with a generator, ask them a yes, no question because the sacral has a yes or a no or there's no response and that means a no for now and to honor that person's response and not try to manipulate them away from their truth or negate what their body is telling them, particularly if you have little children. And I know this is a sensitive subject and at some point you do have to put brakes on because you have to keep that child safe and you need to raise them um, to be polite in society, but getting them in touch with their sacral and honoring their sacral center so that they have their own innate authority that they're raised with correctly is such a beautiful gift. It could change a lot of this world that we live in. So how does a projector relate to another person without knowing the person's human design? It's polite to ask, isn't it? To wait for that other person to ask or invite you, projector, is the best way to enter into this experiment instead of initiating with anybody, 
just stop all of the mental tape inside of your head instead of opening the mouth and letting all of that spewge out of your mouth into whoever you think you should advise or guide wait that's the biggest tip is to wait wait for them to specifically ask you stop initiating particularly with the manifester or the generator they are energy types they're the ones that go first particularly the manifester they get things started so the generator can ask you but you have to ask them back you cannot go with sure i'll do that with you and for you you have to ask them back specifically so you ask as an advisor who are you for yourself just assume that most people are generative because that's what you're going to come across most people are generative and it's polite to ask it's polite to wait and then what happens with the projector is poor projector thinks if i don't start anything i'm not going to get anywhere and that's the conditioned mindset because you assume that you're like this or like that and think you have to make things happen when you don't because one of the things that happens when you enter into this experiment, you start operating in alignment, your frequency field changes so there's not so much distortion. And it's like cleaning off the car windows from a very dirty, muddy car that's been going you know, through rain and mud and sleet and snow. It's like you're having this time to have your own alone time to clean out your aura and to wait to see who actually comes to you and asks you a direct invitation into some kind of energy exchange with them and that's the key point with projectors you're here to advise when recognized correctly for your design and invited and whatever your authority happens to say is right for you to engage or not so it's a about the big things in life however those little things can lead to big things you're at a party and, you, and you're trying to get attention, so you initiate with everybody in the room. When if you would just sit off to the side and do your own thing and observe, somebody will come up to you that is drawn to your energy because your energy talks. Most of communication is nonverbal. It's not necessarily what you say, but it's the energy, the presence that you hold in a room, the availability of energy you are available to one person at a time you're not for large groups of people okay so that's some of the tips about the projector i'm glad that's helpful so um yes so we're looking at the signature for success this is the big key to also help projectors know is that your success is not about your own personal ambitions not necessarily because all advisors projectors are here to operate with one other person at a time primarily and be able to guide that person in their use of energy through knowing who that other person is this is the way that the aura of the projector functions so it's not doing all the doing yourself it's guiding the other in the doing and in guiding the other in their doing you help ensure their success for whoever they are, for whatever their design is. And in that, you experience the sweetness of success yourself. So the not self theme is bitterness. If you're walking around bitter and you're constantly focused on myself, 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 <laughs> and not uh, in partnership with the relationships that are in your life that have invited you into your life, the sweetness of those relationships, you're off track and you're not in alignment. And it's going to lead you deeper and deeper down the bitterness hole until you're swimming in resentment and it feels really uncomfortable. We have our manifester that we talked about, energy type, generator energy type, advisor, non-energy type, awareness of who other is type. And now we have our beautiful uh, reflector. They're here to evaluate. Evaluate the totality because they have this openness i interviewed a reflector recently who was also a living your design guide and i highly recommend him if you are a reflector yourself to go to a guide of your type because you are so very different and what he described it as is like i can't see the trees for the forest literally you are the barometer of the health of your community and being in the center of your community if you're thriving that community is thriving because you're reflecting that. 
if you're not thriving in your community, something's off in that environment that you live in. Your signature is to be surprised by life and what it has to offer you. The not self theme is disappointment. If you're focused specifically on trying to manipulate to get what you want rather than waiting, waiting, waiting for a sense of knowing to arise over a cycle of the moon, because that's what's most important for you is to evaluate over time. There's a different time frequency to what we call lunar beings, reflectors, comparatively to our solar beings, all the other types. They're so rare and so unique and so special and so different. So I see a, a chat here. Mm. So um, anytime you have a question, check into that Q&A and let me know if there's something specific that you want to know. So now let's look at the different ways that each of these four types can get empowered because there's just one shift that you need to make. One shift that will give you what you need from life. And that is your existential question. To get empowered as a manifester, ask yourself, how do I impact? What is my impact? And then inform who you're impacting before you act. That is going to help you get out of the not self theme of anger and help you align to being peaceful in this life before you initiate in form. Now, generator and manifesting generator, you can see that the existential question is, who am I? Who am I for myself? It's not about who I impact. It's not about the other. It's who am I? What am I doing here? Why am I here? What brings me joy? What brings me fire? What brings me passion and aliveness? And wait for life to ask you, Wait for the response to flow from your sacral center that will give you a pulling towards or a pushing away from that will give you a yes, uh-huh, uh-huh, or a sound that is an agreement or a mm -mm, no. Wait for that before trying to make any decisions initiating from mind. Always focus on your existential question of who you are, okay? Otherwise, you're going to risk feeling frustrated or frustrated and angry depending on the design. Now projectors, waiting for our invitation is our strategy to access our authority in order for us to get out of our own trip. If you're conditioned as a projector to think life is all about you because you're amplifying the generators and thinking, well, I've got to figure out who I am. Instead of doing the focus, trying to focus in on yourself, which is not the way that energy works, focus instead on understanding other people. Who is that other person in your life? And what are they asking you for and can you deliver? Is that something that you want to use your precious limited energy resource for? You don't have a lot of it. It's not consistent. So you need to be a specialist for short, people, pe <laughs> short periods of time guiding other in their work, guiding people in their work. That's how we get empowered as projectors. And again, if you just ask, I can send you more recordings that I've done because I've done a lot. Most of my LYD classes were a projector for the first two and a half years. Now, reflector, waiting for our lunar, your lunar cycle, your very special connected lunar cycle, will bring you an ability to recognize who is different or an awareness of what is different. And can you be yourself in this moment? Well, that's going to take that lunar cycle. Otherwise, if you're focused specifically on making snap decisions, and you're in place that's not in alignment for you, you will be disappointed with what life offers you rather than surprised and delighted. So when we're looking at these types, again, remember, this is Rob making this very big complex system very, very simple so that even a child could experiment with it. You don't need anything else other than this, your strategy, and your authority. And your authority comes from somewhere in the design or a process that is explained by some of the free resources I'm going to share with you right after this slide. So I just wanted to add one more piece because I liked the picture uh, to give you a better sense of it. See these blue channels? Those are direct manifestation because they're going from energy centers up to the throat. 
And then we have the generative channels. These generator channels are connected to the sacral, so that creates the generator. And then we have all of these projected channels that are in black. Now, if they were completely open, they'd be a reflector channel, but they're colored in, so now they're black, they're projected, and if we could combine multiple projected channels, we could make a manifester. But I want to show you the quality of the life force, the prana, the energy that is flowing between these centers, and understand that if you're looking at your design and you have one of these channels, that is who you're here to be, to honor that, to respect that and not to hate it because I tell you the most common thing that happens when people come to me for a reading is because they are so different wherever the definition is, most people outside, not self people as well, deeply conditioned go, what's wrong with you? Why are you like that? And then you think it's all this is what's wrong with me. And you might hate yourself because of your difference because you're not homogenized and not happily fitting in. So in order to live your difference, utilizing your strategy will help you access your authority. And if you want to learn the authority, I'm going to give you some resources here. So let me just check and see how the Q&As are doing. Um, no problem, Sandy can do that for you. And don't let me forget, Andrew, I will help you look at that because I want to show everybody in this class. So any uh, questions, you're also welcome to raise your hand and I can unmute you if you would prefer to, to ask a question as well. Okay, I'm going to share with you a newcomer's tour of resources. So these are recommended resources where you can get the information that you need in order to experiment with your design. So one of the first uh, steps that you can do is get your human design chart. So when you click here on my website, uh, or if you could share that link, please, to the website, you're going to see it's humandesignlifecoaching.com. At the every top of every single slide, uh, slide, this is a slide, every single web page, you'll see an orange bar. And if you click that bar, you can fill out the information and one of my team members will hand create a uh, PDF for you of your basic human design chart, giving you your type, strategy, and authority, your profile, your incarnation cross, which we haven't talked about yet, but we will in this um, training should you decide to continue. And so it's run by hand, so it's not instant, but it's also gonna give you the gate activations and the line values. So that's one of the things that I do is do that as well as create for you a My Body Graph share link. And in My Body Graph, which is, you've seen me use it a little bit today, it's software by Jovian Archive, the creators of the human design system, Ross Company, that software has a free section on the site that's called the talking body graph right here talking about body graph and you can listen to the first step free so let me go ahead and show you what that looks like okay and that's what's going to tell you exactly what you need to know from literally the horse's mouth it's going to tell you your introduction to you your strategy and your authority that is the most important thing if you remember nothing else strategy and authority. That's all you need to begin your process to experiment with it. Okay, so that's going to be sent to you free, a link to your My Body Graph. And then once you get that link, you add, you sign up for a free account. And in the Talking Body Graph, you can listen to the, all this introduction stuff, all of the things that are here. And if you want to go deeper, there's not for not that much more money, it's under shop or it ask, it'll probably ask you if you want to buy. Mine's unlocked because I bought it for all of my charts. But the foundation and the advanced gives you a lot more information. The thing I love about this rather than reports is that it's interactive and you're literally hearing raw. Raw is going to talk to you about your channels and talk to you about your nodes and talk to you about your gates, you can see here. And there's also some written material. So that's why I love uh, using mybodygraph.com. Now, the next place that you could go, and this is another place that I wanna uh, recommend to you to check out, is when you get the PDF, which I will send out to everybody who you know, signed up for this course or for this webinar, 
when you get the PDF, you click here, you can go on to Jovian Archives website and there is a little PDF, um, a free ebook that I've co-authored that you can learn about your human design, discovering yourself from both the ebook and some regular emails that are going to be sent to you, taking you through the five steps of transformation to awaken to yourself, to discover yourself and to love yourself, to learn to make decisions that you trust. So that's the next place that would be um, really supportive for you to, to begin your experiment. So when you're looking to learn to live this, yes, you can get the book and read it. This is the uh, Living Your Design Manual for Cellular Transformation, which is our text for our Living Your Design um, experience, awakening experience. So this workshop is something that I'm trained to do by the International Human Design School. If you want to become any kind of professional, this is the first place to begin. You have to go through your own process first so that you are seeing your truth. And it begins with seeing what's not you. And that's the tools and the techniques that we're going to be able to continue in this class, in this journey.